On the line with us today is billionaire investor and speculator Eric Sprott. Eric, we spoke with Rick Rule a couple weeks ago and he talked about an asset's optionality to the price of gold. With all your research pointing to big moves in gold in 2014, this has led you to speculate on marginal gold producers. Please explain to our listeners what optionality is and why you've elected to incorporate this strategy. Sure. Well, I take a very positive view of where the price of gold is going. I'm absolutely convinced it will go north of $2,000 an ounce. That, that's just a, a first take on what should happen in probably within 12 months. And if I, most companies can produce gold for 1000 uh, if, if they can get 2000 they're making a $1,000 margin. So you simply take the ounces produced by, you know, a company, and let's say it's 100,000 ounces, you make $1,000 an ounce, you're making $100 million. Then if you look at the market cap, you find out the guy's market cap is $50 million, and he could make $100 million pre-tax profit. Uh, and, and then let me put it in after-tax profit, $70 million after-tax profit. Well, if it trades at 10 times earnings, it can go to $750 million market cap, and today it's trading at 100. So you can make 700% on your money. And I don't think uh, 2000 is a very major target, by the way. I think it goes substantially higher than that. So I think there's lots of opportunity in in the gold and silver producers, uh, if these prices want to go up, these stocks will move a lot. We've had a great move so far in January. Gold price is acting well here. Silver price has been a little punky, but uh, it's starting to make a bit of a move here. As we speak. And I think we're going to see substantially higher prices. And therefore, I think it's, it's, I call it the investment opportunity of a lifetime. I really think it is right now. In fact, it's already, we've missed the first 25% already, but I think there's a lot more to come. Technical analysis would suggest the price of gold and gold stocks drop faster than they rise in a secular bull market. And gold's been in a cyclical bear market for the past 24 to 30 months. History suggests, therefore, it will take another 24 to 30 months to reach previous high of 1900 before moving higher. You've made a $50 million bet or so that the price of gold is going to rise substantially faster than this uh, this time around. What gives you that impression? Sure. Well, of course... The manipulation gives me that view. When you see the oddities that we talk about, whether it's the German situation, the regulators saying it's manipulated, the uh, eight sigma events, uh, the history of the uh, central banks and the gold, the supply demand data that we look at, where I'm sure the demand is twice the supply. All these things tell me when this dam breaks, it's going to break fast, and we will see a very dramatic change in the way people look at gold. I think it's instructive to your listeners to, to just think of what's happened in the market so far this year. I mean, if you were in an emerging market, I mean, your market's probably down 10%, your currency's down 5%, but the price of gold's up, up 5%, and the gold stocks are up 20%. So there's a big differentiation going on here as we have entered into 2014, which I think will carry on. When gold stocks rally, they tend to rally very, very large. Out of the 08 bottom, I think they rallied close to 300% off the low. Uh, when we uh, hit our low in 2000, the UE index was 35. I think it got to something like 650. So we went up by 1,700% in, uh, in uh, about seven or eight years. So that's the kind of move that I think we're looking at. And I don't think there's anywhere else in the investment horizon where you could even contemplate that kind of gain. And, and that's kind of why we're in the precious metals and why we're so optimistic about things. Talk to our listeners about Veris Gold or, or another company, uh, if you so choose, that you, sure. you've picked. Uh, Veris is a company that's anticipating substantial gold production in 2014. The market cap's incredibly low, and this is exacerbated by a financing issue that just became apparent at the end of January. Uh, maybe you can use this as an example of why a 10 or 20 bagger is not an unreasonable expectation in an environment where gold moves back above 1500 Sure. Well, I'll use it as an example. And uh, there have been developments in uh, Veris. Uh, they have a loan that Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank has, uh, now has uh, said that they are in event of default, and now there has to be some refinancing that's being done, which uh, I'm trying to get involved in. We are the largest shareholder. Um, and their market cap around $30 million. They're going to produce, let's say, 150,000 ounces. If their costs are a thousand, they make a, they can make 150 million pre tax. Call it a hundred million after tax could be a billion dollar market cap. And, um, for that reason, I'm very actively involved in trying to, to generate a refinancing for it because 
from these levels, I mean, that that could potentially, using that those mathematics, be a 20-bagger, and that's the sort of thing that I'm interested in. A recurring theme I discuss with investors on the show is the power of warrants in junior mining, uh, junior gold stock investing. I think a strategy of investing in gold stocks without warrants is a bit of a mistake. Why are warrants so important? <laughs> well, you're, that's kind of a page out of Rick Rule's book, and I know Rick is a great warrant supporter. Of course, the reason that warrants are meaningful, when you have the kind of moves that we're talking about, when you do a financing and the, the price of these stock is at X and the warrants at X plus 20 or X plus 30 percent, I mean, if the stock goes up five times, effectively, you've almost doubled your return. You're making a thousand percent return when the stock goes up 500 because the warrant's going to go up almost 500 and the stock goes up 500. So that's why warrants are uh, can be particularly rewarding if you get your timing right. If you get your timing wrong, of course, the warrant is pretty well valueless the day you have it because it's priced out of the money, if you will. Uh, but if, if you get your timing right and uh, things unfold in the precious metals market and the and in the precious metal stocks, the way we would imagine, it just increases your return by almost a factor of two. Finally, I want to end with your thoughts on government policy. Government's been a bit of a disaster in recent years, and your knowledge of the gold and silver market have highlighted this for you. I know you're a member of the Mises Institute of Canada, and you support many causes for liberty. Uh, how would you character characterize your political views? Are you a libertarian, a moderate, an anarchist, or something else? Well, I'm not, I don't really aspire to uh, political issues. In fact, I rarely vote now, and I wonder why people in the U.S. vote, quite frankly, because it doesn't matter who's in power. It doesn't seem to be change policy much. And even as you mentioned the word policy, I sort of snicker to myself, if what's the policy? What's the policy been since 2000? You know what the policy in my mind has been since 2000? Let's try to keep the system together. Let's try to keep the banking system together. There's way too levered. We can't allow asset values to go down, paper asset values, by the way, um, because we got to keep our banking system together. And I think almost everything that's been done, particularly by the Fed, of course, but also by by the Treasury in, in approving things like TARP and TALP and a new home buyer or tax credits and cash for clunkers when they get it, it's all to try to keep the whole system together. The, the explosion in food stamps, the explosion in student loans, it's all meant... To tr let's try to keep this thing together because left on its own, it wouldn't have stayed together and you would have had a calamity in the banking system. So I really believe that that's their only policy. Of course, their overriding policy is to get reelected, unfortunately, and that always uh, implies some form of largesse to uh, buy votes. And I just think that all of those initiatives are wrong placed here, uh, that we should be creating... Um, more jobs. I mean, I can't believe that we've let the number of jobs go offshore that we've let go offshore. And I would put it down to, you know, the military industrial complex who, who operates worldwide could care less when they have an American employee or, a, or an Indian employee or a Taiwanese employee. If, if one's cheaper than the other, that's where we'll go and to keep our profits up. And it's this constant willingness to pander to the financial arena. That, I think, is the biggest policy error that, that pretty well all governments in the world have. Eric, is there anything else you'd like to add for our listeners? Uh, well, I'll just say that anybody who's been in the space, and we've had a great start to the year here. Um, from our perspective, you know, we run hedge funds, and it's been a long time since stocks have gone down. They're now going down now. Uh, they're producing kind of outsized returns, the gold and the and precious metal stocks have already produced. We, we can almost call it a year here and say we had a good year. You know, we're up 20% in our gold fund. Now, we have a long way to come back here, uh, but I think uh, it just looks uh, really like we're in a paradigm shift here that people will, re will finally realize, which we've been preaching, and many of my, my cohorts have been preaching, that, that precious metals has always been the place to be. It was a place to be for the whole first decade of our, the start of this uh, century, Yes, we've had a couple of down years here because of, I think, manipulation. But I think that the payback will be uh, unbelievable going forward here. Eric, thanks so much for joining us, and we hope to get you back here soon. Okay, I look forward to that, and all the best to you and all your listeners. 